Welcome to the National Women's Fitness Academy podcast. We're here to talk about women's health, female hormones, body image, and all things health and fitness. Hello, girls. Welcome back to another episode of the Women's Fitness Academy's podcast. I'm your host, Siggy, one of the WFA's educators and a women's online coach. Today, I am chatting with Britt. Well, Brittany, Britt, whatever you want to call her. I'm pretty sure it's just Britt. Anyway, (laughs) Britt is the founder of Actively You, is a personal training and body image coaching business. Now, Britt started um, out as a trainer back in 2017 after losing 20 freaking kilos, which is phenomenal. And ever (laughs) since then, she has transitioned into helping women not only to just lose weight, but to also feel amazing and empowered regardless of what their size is. Now, Britt is also based in Brisbane. She runs mobile personal training sessions along with her other trainers, but she also has an online program designed around empowering women through exercise and improving your body image. So Britt, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So good to be here. So let's start diving a little bit deep about your personal journey of losing 20 kilos. Like what got you started doing that and where are you right now with your fitness journey? Yeah, well, um, I always kind of, I was never like um, seriously um, unhealthy or like morbidly obese or anything, but um, I did carry a little bit extra weight. I, I wasn't the best with my gut health and things like that. And I, yeah, I kind of tried so many different diets and it just wasn't working for me. You know, the amount of different diets, I think we've probably all tried over the years, but I remember doing keto and getting so sick of cauliflower. It wasn't even funny. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so it was actually, I had my moment when I was um, on a train heading into the city and it was pretty crowded as they usually are. And I was standing up as were lots of other men and women around me. And the woman in the seat in front of me kind of looked at me and went, oh, do you want to sit here? And I realized that she thought that I was pregnant. Um, And that's why she was offering me her seat, which is a very kind thing to do. But obviously that kind of triggered something in me that, look, I need to I need to do something about this. So I was feeling very uncomfortable in my body and um, I ended up getting a mobile personal trainer myself and I went through that journey of, um, of losing weight, which did take quite a bit of time. Uh, it took me a bit over a year to lose 20 kilos. And when I kind of reached that transition, I was also really unhappy in my job that I was at the time. I was working in facilities management, which is basically whenever anyone has problems in their building, they call you and complain about it. So (laughs) not the most positive atmosphere. Um, And I just wanted something else. And like I had transitioned from utterly hating exercise to really quite enjoying it. And it was just part of my life now. And I wanted other women to be able to feel that way as well. So I decided to become a personal trainer. I had to quit my job in order to do the course because I wanted to do it in person and I wasn't able to work part-time where I was working um, then. So yeah, I did that. I did the course and started training other women with my focus um, at the time was on was on weight loss. Um, and I maintained my weight loss for quite a while. Um, I'm probably sitting, I've probably gained maybe like seven or eight kilos back over time just um, with a few health issues and stuff that I've had. And um, as you said, I've, I've transitioned a lot more into that body um, confidence and body image training as well now. So um, that kind of got prompted from a chronic health condition that I developed, which was hypothyroidism. And um, if you don't know what that is or anyone doesn't know what that is, it's basically everything in your body slows down. <laughs> it's just, um, it was really hard. I was utterly exhausted all the time. The most I could do was walk my dog once or twice a week. And then, you know, I would take him for like a 20 minute walk and then I'd be like, okay, I need a three hour nap now, you know, sleeping 12 hours overnight plus three hour naps during the day. And, you know, as a result, of course I gained weight because I wasn't moving as much. And um, that kind of prompted me to go, look, this is something I don't really have control over at the moment. 
and restricting my diet was just causing me to be more and more exhausted all the time. And I was like, this isn't, I need something better than this. This isn't how it's, it's got to continue. So I did a lot of research into body image, into healthy eating and, you know, kind of stepping away from that calorie counting mentality that I'd always been in. Um, because it just wasn't working for me. And that's when I kind of really stepped into that body image side of it in that, you know, you can be happy and healthy and comfortable no matter what your body size is. And that's what I, that's kind of how I made that transition. And that's kind of where I'm stepping, oh, that's where I am now is having that, that client base and even my existing clients, you know, kind of went through that transition with me, which is really mm-hmm. nice. I still have clients that, you know, are, are coming across and they're doing my new online program and stuff like that and learning um, the different ways to appreciate their body as opposed to just, um, yeah, trying to shrink it all the time, I suppose. Mm, such a beautiful process to experience, not only yourself, but like also having clients to experience that as well. Yeah. Um, speaking from experience, that's something that has been happening to me over the last couple of years, stepping away solely from just the fitness side of things, but stepping more into, you could say more of the holistic side of health, yeah. which yeah. is something yeah. that you're very familiar with right now because you're doing mm. it yourself. So noticing that transition within yourself and noticing that clients are actually wanting to participate in that change as well and realizing hey it's not just about the body weight you know it may have some form of impact on your body i don't know five ten years ago but seeing that transition is just mind-blowing i don't know about you but every time i come across a client and they just have this sort of like um bulb moment and they're like oh my god it was never about the weight and you're like Yes. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. And like the amount of clients I've trained over the years that, that get to their goal weight that they want to be and they're still like, oh, I still don't like my flabby arms or, you know, they always still find something to pick on. And yeah. so now I'm like, okay, how about we stop the picking on <laughs> because, and we want to work on that mindset because, yeah. you know, like you can do all the things to lose weight but it doesn't mean you're going to be happy with your body at the time. So what needs to change isn't your weight, it's your mind and your mindset around it. And then once you have that shift, regardless of your weight, it's going to stop affecting your worth. And I think that's really important because unfortunately, especially as women, we've been very much conditioned that our, um, our worth is based around our appearance and to help people step away from that and see so many extra benefits around health and being active because I feel like, um, you know, fitness and body image really hasn't gone together very well in the past. You know, it's been um, definitely there's been a change in the recent years, but, you know, previously it was, it was very just aesthetically focused. That's what it was about. You exercise to change your body and, you know, starting to help people see, look at all these things that have happened because you started exercising that have nothing to do with how your body has changed. And having people see those things and start to appreciate their body for what it can do rather yeah. than what it looks like is just, it always gives me goosebumps when when that transition happens in their minds. I literally have goosebumps as you talk yeah. <laughs> now. Yeah. Um, and I love that you mentioned um, about shifting away from just solely focusing on the aesthetic side of things. Mm. Like, God, oh my God, I'm totally guilty of that. You know, when you first start your journey, like yourself, you know, you lost this amount of weight due to not feeling comfortable within yourself. But we don't, I'm, I'm speaking from what I can see as an outsider, but it wasn't necessarily because you were happy within yourself, you wanted to lose it because someone made certain comment that made you feel so uncomfortable. Exactly. And that, and usually, you know, um, most of the time people change the way they look because they're unhappy about themselves. They're not coming from a place, oh, I love my body, so I'm just going to change it. They're wanting to change because they bloody hate themselves, which is a real relationship to have. It is. And I like, I love that, um, I don't love the saying, but I have like thoughts around the saying of uh, exercise because you love your body, not because you hate it. And I feel like that is fantastic. But unfortunately, I feel like that's just another thing for women to fail at. Because Mm -hmm. let's be honest, most women, including myself, started exercising because they hated their bodies and they wanted to change them. And so like, to want to go, okay, well, I should be loving my body and I'm exercising. I don't know. It would just make me feel like 
oh, well, I can't do that. So it's just another thing that I suck at. Mm. But if we can help them to kind of go, okay, well, you might have started exercising for that reason, but let's start to find things to appreciate our bodies along the process. Yeah. Um, then that can really help to shift that um, mentality and then they can start that process because they think it's all well and good to say, oh, you should be exercising because you love your body. But how do you love your body? Like that's, that's the thing that we all need help with, you know, so that's what kind of I'm trying to, to do is to help women to go, okay, well, how can I love my body? So that exercising actually becomes about exercising for enjoyment and health and, you know, movement rather than out of hate and wanting to change your body. Mm, I love that. So cool. What would you say are some of like the methods that um, you you work with clients to help them shift that mindset around the body image? Yeah. Uh, one big thing I, I do is um, negative self-talk. Mm-hmm. I will always, in a very kind way, of course, um, but if I am face-to-face with them, they might say something like a little while ago, a client said something about, oh, like my tuck shop lady arms. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, we don't call them that. And she was like, yeah, why did I say that? Like, mm-hmm. it was just something like, like, she was like, wow, like had that realization that she'd said that. And I was like, okay, so do you really believe that? Like, I would love to know where that kind of phrase comes from. And mm-hmm. like, let's break that down and go, okay, well, Let's find out what the real issue is here. Do you, is this just a phrase that you've heard and you've been conditioned or do you really believe that bigger arms are bad? Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, most people have no problem with people with big arms. Like they don't actually care about it. Yeah. Um, but on themselves, it's, it somehow becomes this is- issue. So helping people to kind of break down their thoughts and challenging those beliefs that they might yes. have about their body, um, I find really helpful. And that's something um, that's one of the lessons in my online program as well that we go through is challenging those thoughts. And um, we take one thought and go, okay, let's break that all the way down and find out what that really means to us. Um, So that's one way I definitely help. And another way is creating gratitude for our bodies. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really important to find a part of our body, um, for example, our stomachs because I'm one of those people that I just have a tummy that sticks out. Like I'm never going to have a flat stomach unless, you know, I would have to probably lose like 20 plus kilos, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, for me, it's not worth it. I'm totally happy. Like the amount of restriction and strain that would put on my body. I'm just like, that's not worth it. But, you know, a lot of people have a little tummy and I'm like, okay, let's have a think about our stomach and go, what does our stomach give us? that we wouldn't have if we didn't have it. Yeah. So for women, I'm like, okay, so our stomach, we're uncomfortable with it. Um, let's take the digestive system. Let's do some research on the digestive system and see all the amazing things it can do um, and think about, okay, well, if we didn't have a stomach, we wouldn't be able to eat the foods that we love. We wouldn't be able to enjoy them. Um, you know, like even random things about stomach acid is really interesting. Like the stomach acid um, in our stomachs is enough to burn our skin, but because... Um, of like how it's all designed it's it's all you know contained and so it's safe and so finding out like factual information about like the body part that you're uncomfortable with can help to shift that mindset of well my stomach's not all bad it has things that give me joy and that give me life and so helping to then go okay well let's remember those facts that we learned about our arms or our um our chins or (laughs) you know whatever body part it might be might be your nose you know like let's take um some facts about that so the next time we're feeling insecure about that body part we can call back some of that information that we learned Mm -hmm. to then go okay here's some valuable things about that body part so we're then just kind of starting to go okay here's this one negative thing but oh look at all these positives And so then we want to kind of try and start to outweigh them. And, you know, eventually we might get to that point. It is all a process that we're like, oh, well, I like my cute little stretch marks or, you know, like we'll kind of get to those points. But you've got to do that kind of um, unlearning or relearning first. Because if you don't have that kind of base, like knowledge of things about your body that are useful, to call back on um then it can be hard to be like okay well think positive things about your stomach oh, I don't know. you know like but if you've done a little bit of research on an area that you're particularly self-conscious about then you've got a few facts that can be like okay well this is an interesting thing or that and yeah you can kind of think about it that way mm, so valuable to start asking yourself those um 
you know, good questions because like you said, you could be like, oh, you know, like what do you like about your stomach? But if someone is not really conscious enough to have that proper conversation, you have to help them and mm. a little bit deeper and be like, cool, like what is the big picture? Like why do we want a small stomach? What's a small stomach is going to give you? But then making them realize that, hey, you know, you don't necessarily have to lose X amount of weight to make yourself happier. You can look at the different style of um of the life that you're living so that way you can feel happier within the body and i think that's a really good way of challenging your um negative self-talk because mm. as humans we're constantly looking for prob problems we're constantly yeah. thinking of the negative like unfortunately that like we weren't born negative people it's just happened over the time throughout years it could be from yeah. school it could be from parenting it could be from whatever it is like work stresses and most people think of the worst case scenario they don't, they don't think of oh what the possibilities of me failing or what that mm. possibilities of me doing x y and z so yeah it's really cool to just tap in a little bit more to make people um realize that hey whatever you're currently going through you can change that um perspective yeah because like you said like we're, we're basically conditioned from birth to like especially as um, especially as women, more so than men. I know that they have their own challenges, of course, but um, where conditions, like we see in the media, like very rarely do you see a woman who, you know, isn't supermodel thin um, in a serious, um, desirable role in TV or movies. You know, they're often, like I think of like characters that they're often, you know, the joke or their weight is always mentioned. And even though you're like, you're just like an average sized person but you know every single scene they're kind of being made a joke of or something and so we see that and we go oh so she's got bigger legs and that's not okay so my legs mustn't be okay mm -hmm. and then yeah like you said parenting even you know like it's it's not our parents fault because they were raised the same way but if they're always dieting and always unhappy with their bodies we pick up on that as children <laughs> and start to learn that as well and you know, like I'm so proud of my mum now. She's been um, kind of through this journey with me now. And so she um, she goes, oh, you know, I walked up the street today. She's um, she's kind of in a rural area and she has a little Shetland pony that um, that she has. And so she took her for a walk up the street and she goes, I was in my active wear and I had my muffin top out and I felt so good, you know. And I was just like, yes, mum, you know, <laughs> because, you know, she's been so conditioned her whole life to be like oh you know like I need to lose weight I need to lose weight I need to lose weight and now that she can walk up you know her you know rural road you know in her you know tights and her sports crop and she feels comfortable and she's like I was so proud of myself and like it gives me goosebumps now to be able to you know have people have that change and be like yeah I can just be healthy and I can be active and it doesn't matter how like I don't have to fit into this mold to be yeah. healthy and active yeah. Yeah. And while we're on the topic of fitting like that certain mold, as you mentioned, before we started recording, we were talking about our own experience about um, achieving certain goals. And we mentioned how with a lot of us, and obviously speaking from both of our experiences, that we used to focus on too many avenues, let's say we'll go into the diet side of things that we would try five, 10 different things to achieve a certain goal, but then realize that, hey, whatever we've been doing hasn't been working because we haven't actually dedicated one thing to st stick in that lane to actually achieve that goal. Exactly, yeah. I feel like, you know, whatever it may be, we always try so many different options, you know, and we try something for such a short amount of time and then we're like, yeah, this will work, it's great. And then as soon as it's not working instantly for us, because we're such an instant gratification generation, aren't we? <laughs> that, you know, that we're just like, oh, this isn't working fast enough. And, you know, whether that may be with diets or whether that may be when you start your coaching business and you want to, you know, stick to a certain um, niche or things like that. And then you're like, oh, but I'm narrowing myself down too much or, you know, whatever the case may be. Like, I think it's so important to do one thing and do it really well, whether that's in business or whether that's, you know, learning to um, like eat more intuitively and removing that restriction from your life and then finding that freedom around food. And you might focus on that for a little while and your fitness might just kind of 
not like fade into the background, but it might not be as much of a focus. You might be like, okay, well, I'm not going to do this um, strength training program. I'll just go to the gym a few days a week and do what I feel like, or I might just go for walks or I might just, you know, you know, whatever the case may be. I think it's really um, good to focus on one area in our life rather than trying to focus on all the things <laughs> because it can just become far too overwhelming for us. And I think as coaches as well, like, we information overload ourselves so much and want to try and be like, oh, look at this exciting thing and this and this and this and this. And I know I do it myself. Like I, I genuinely actually um, limit the amount of content that I consume that is based around my job because yeah. otherwise I'm like, um, like I love podcasts. Um, and But mostly I'll listen to true crime podcasts because they're <laughs> like I have a great interest in it because I feel like like often when I'm working or something, I'll listen to other podcasts. But like when it's like my time off, I try and switch off because otherwise we do just overload ourselves and we get too much information and then we pass that on to our clients because we get excited, yeah. but then they get too much information and it's just, yeah, it's good to keep ourselves a little bit more um reined in sometimes I think mm, I love that and you made a really good point before regarding um the diets as well like having that um restriction mindset around them because like you said you know we tend to do one thing but then if it doesn't work we tend to do another thing and then jump over and you know a similar um situation to that is that restriction mindset around food you know mm. that's very um, correlated to body image, you know, when we've wanted to look a certain way, we would literally push all the foods, all the bad foods, quote mm. by quote, um, away so you could, you know, look a certain way, but that doesn't actually achieve any purpose to you. It's just restricting you even more and f making you feel like shit. Exactly. And like the research that I've done, like since I've kind of done that transition is um, over to the more kind of holistic side of health and fitness is you know, all of that restriction, all of basically like diet culture, I suppose, you know, all the different types of dieting, whether that's, um, you know, fasting for no real reason or, um, you know, all those, you know, all the different diets that are out there, there's a million. <laughs> um, it all actually leads to just feelings of shame and guilt. And it can even lead to, you know, eating disorders and mental health challenges. And, like it's so not the way that we're supposed to live and it's just been the way that we've been taught that we have to for so long um, and something that that you teach Siggy that I think is just absolutely amazing is learning about the feminine and the masculine ways mm -hmm. of eating yeah. um, and that's something I hadn't really heard of until I'd heard you talk about it and it was just like my my whole eyes were opened mm -hmm. because you know like we think about like calorie counting and things like that and I don't think that's necessarily bad I think it has a purpose yeah. I think now I think you know I used to recommend it to everyone but you know now I think that we do it far too much as a society when we don't really need to um, but all those kind of metric based um, uh, ways to measure things I suppose you know like your measurements and your weight and your calorie counting and all that kind of stuff is very masculine and that's what everything is is based around in diet but as women we have you know like yes you know eat less calories and you'll lose weight like yes that is you know biologically correct but you know men are very much well x equals y that's what happens I feel like everyone has a man in their life that at some point when they've dieted their partner or their friend or whatever has you know reduced their just I remember my husband just reduced his dinner and he lost like five kilos in two weeks and I was like what's going on? <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> um, you know, so I feel like, you know, like X always equals Y, you know, like it's just always like, you know, it's very, um, you know, it makes sense for that to be very masculine. Whereas women we have, okay, yes, we have our eating and we have our weight loss, but we've got all this stuff in between that we have to take into consideration that, um, that I think we're like, well, why doesn't X equal Y? Why is it this not working? And so we just keep trying different things and different things and different things. And what we need to learn is that as women, we need to be so much more focused on how we're feeling and how, um, you know, how does eating better make us feel? Does that change our mental clarity? Does it change how we're feeling about our bodies? Does not restricting our diet, does that 
stop us from um, binging on certain foods. Like um, I mentioned earlier, like I'm an absolute chocolate lover. Mm -hmm. And anytime there was like chocolate or like ice cream in the freezer or anything, I would be like, it would be calling to me. Like I would know it was there and I would have to eat all of it. And now I can have a block of chocolate in the, in the pantry and be like, Oh, I don't really feel like it at the moment. And because I can just go and get chocolate whenever I want, like, I don't feel the need to eat it 24 seven or to just eat all that's there because I'm not restricting myself from having that anymore. So I actually probably have less now than I used to when I would just be like, well, I'm just going to eat the whole block of chocolate. So really tapping into those, how we feel about food um, is so much more important, I think, than, you know, trying to measure and weigh it and find all different ways and different hacks to, you know, get as a quicker, quicker response out of our body as possible because, really they never last Mm -hmm. and we want something that's sustainable and balanced that you can actually live with you know and live in a healthy way because that's really what matters most when it comes to your health absolutely absolutely and I love that you mentioned like um taking it towards like the feminine and the masculine energy because it's something that comes up a lot in conversation lately whether it's within uh, with clients or like people yourself or just like random mm. conversations um, through my uh, DMs. But people don't usually understand that there's certain tools that you can use in your toolbox to serve mm. a purpose for you. And like you mentioned, with the, within the fitness and health industry, we've known to, you know, lose weight through tracking or mm. through doing the meal prep side of things but people don't realize that sometimes that is actually not going to serve them because whether it's their lifestyle or whether it's their way of thinking and looking at food or you know women who suffer from binge eating or overeating or under eating mm. whatever sometimes cal- like sometimes counting calories isn't going isn't going to be the solution for them mm. and a lot to be more damaging exactly Mm. i love that you mentioned um how before that there's that middle point that people don't usually look at and that's the thing that we must look at because that's that's the i'd say it's the core of what the issue is for them to actually dictate whether they do need to count calories or whether they need to go more of the informed side of eating to more like the holistic side of things Definitely. Yeah. I think that, you know, there's so much that goes on for us as women and, um, you know, learning to become in tune with the middle part of, you know, how is this affecting my hormones? Or Mm -hmm. like I said, like when I had hypothyroidism, I started restricting my diet again because I was like, I need to lose weight because I've gained it. And I was like, exhausted even more so, (laughs) you know, because I was not fueling my body. I was you know, giving it so little and wanting so much out of it. And that was just not good for me and my body at that time. And, you know, I think that we expect so much from our bodies and, you know, while we're trying to give them the nutritional requirements of a toddler, you know, (laughs) and it's just, it's, it's can be so damaging, not only to our physical health, but to our mental as well, because if we're always in that mindset of we must restrict, 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 to get what we want, well, unfortunately, we've seen and we talked about earlier that they get there and they're still unhappy and there's still there's still something wrong. You know, there's always going to find something wrong. So we need to work on how can we nourish our bodies? How can we learn to know that that's okay? Because I think that's the, the hardest part is is switching your mind. You know, like you can go, okay, well, I'm going to force myself to eat X, Y, and Z. And, you know, like almost like restricting, but in the other way. Yeah. <laughs> but if you don't switch your mindset to go, it's okay for me to eat this much food or it's okay if I'm bigger than my partner or, um, you know, it's okay if my body's a little bit bigger than, you know, so-and-so down the street or whatever, you know, movie star, like, learning that that's okay is such a a big thing and and something I talk to my clients about is I'm like you know me and you could do the exact same workout routine we could work out at the exact same time we eat the exact same foods at the exact same time together and we could do that for six months our bodies are still going to look completely different Mm -hmm. you know and that's because each body it changes and um, responds differently to what you give it you know like I have been running for maybe six or so months now I haven't really lost much weight like because my body is just like no I don't want to (laughs) you know and whereas you know there's like my my husband he will literally go 
oh, I want to lose a few kilos for this race. He's a cyclist. It's very weight based. It's a whole thing. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, I just want to lose a few kilos coming up for this race that he's got so he can go up the mountains faster or whatever. And he's like, boom, done it, you know, because his body responds differently to mine. You know, I could do the exact same thing as him or as my girlfriend and, you know, our bodies will respond differently. And so that's the thing we need to know is that just because this works for one person doesn't mean it's going to work for you. We're yeah. all different and we need to embrace that as opposed to going, well, this is, there's only one version of healthy and fit and beautiful and that's all that there can be. Mm. And that comes down to also the comparison side of mm. You know, if there wasn't any anyone around you, you would be happy because you wouldn't be comparing yourself to what they look like, what they're doing, what they're achieving. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you literally have to block the noise out and really realize, hey, you're just focusing on yourself and what's good for you, not what's good, what not what looks good on other people. Because exactly. like you said, we could be doing the same program, the same nutrition, we could be sleeping you know, the, the same hours, whatever, doing the same routine, but our results are going to be completely different. Yeah. Yeah. It's never the same for two people. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's something I, I talk about in my program as well is removing that triggering media. Because I think until you stop and realize that like there's so much out there, like now I watch movies and I'm like, oh, like I remember watching the one of the new James Bond trailers and, you know, I think Daniel Craig's like 50 or something at this point. And, you know, there's this like tiny 25-year-old with him. I'm like, why is this okay? Like, can't we just have like a, you know, like like a size 10 or a size 12, you know, 40-year-old? Like that would be great, <laughs> you know, like as, and until you actually start to notice these things, you don't realise how incredibly programmed we are that, that this is what's okay and this is what's desirable and therefore that just kind of subconsciously sinks in and we go, well, this is all that's okay and that's desirable. So um, either acknowledging those tricking things because, I mean, I can't cut out movies and TV altogether. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, just acknowledging that and then like on our socials and things like that, we can remove those um, posts of, you know, people that we might see that makes us feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And like I was talking to a friend about this and she's, you know, she's um, quite um, slim and toned and absolutely gorgeous. And um, she's like, oh, you know, like there was this one um, fitness influencer or something that was just making me feel really self-conscious about um, my body and how much I exercise. And, you know, she worked out a lot. You know, she cycles and runs and does Pilates in the gym, you know, and she just does it because she loves it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she she was like, you know, it's making me feel uncomfortable because, you know, the, the fitness person might be like, oh, have you done your workout today? It's not too late. Make sure you work out today. And, you know, like, and it would just make her feel like, oh, but I didn't, but I wanted to rest and it's good to have a rest day, but it made her feel uncomfortable for doing that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no matter what our size is, you know, there is media that will trigger us. And so we need to, if we can, remove that out of our life and replace it with people that are going to make us feel good about ourselves and about our bodies, regardless of what our size is. Mm. It's so funny that you mentioned the the media. It, like that that could be like a whole another conversation for another. It could be. <laughs> I get on so many rants about it. <laughs> it's, it's so funny because some people don't even really realise how from a young age you've been conditioned that you have to live this happy ever, you know, lifestyle, you know, like Disney has done. Yes. It. And people yes. don't even realize that. And they're like, once you start watching the movies again as an adult, you're like, holy shit. Like this whole time, you know, they, they have a fight or they lose one another. The woman, you know, gives up her life to be with a man and yes. just like, whoa, what whoa. is going on? Yeah. So. <laughs> We have to start deconditioning all of that. And back to what you said, it takes a lot of work through the mindset side of things. It does. It does. And it's, yeah, learning those triggers and learning where those things come from. Like I remember speaking of Disney, there was a um, a little video I saw of Tinkerbell and um, she like looks down in the mirror and she looks at her hips and she's like, oh, and then she like puts her hands on her hips and then raises them up to see how big her hips are. And I'm like, this is a kid's movie and we've got Tinkerbell feeling uncomfortable about the size of her hips. And you're like, but what, <laughs> you know, you just like, it's unbelievable when you stop to really kind of acknowledge that. And I think that can really help with challenging our feelings as well, because, you know, we would, 
almost everyone would look at that and go, that's not acceptable yeah. for her to be doing. But when we do it to ourselves, we're like, oh, well, that's fine. Mm-hmm. So by kind of using that as well to help challenge those beliefs that we have about ourselves, those beliefs we have about size and health, um, that's something I talk about in my masterclass actually is, you know, discussing, you know, do you judge people based on their size, judge what they do? Because you might see a girl who's a size eight in the food court eating a burger and be like, yeah, she's eating a burger. Off you go. But if you see a girl that's a size 16 eating a burger, are you like, what's she eating a burger for? She should be eating a salad. Like, mm-hmm. have you got those little mind that things in your head that you automatically think well if they're in a bigger body they're unhealthy and if they're in a smaller body they're healthy and that could be the complete opposite like I think we all know people who are in larger bodies who eat well and exercise and we know people who are in smaller bodies that do no exercise and do not eat great and they are still living in a smaller body so I think it's so important to use um, what we can to help challenge those beliefs around um you know, what is and isn't healthy. Mm, yes. Oh my God. Such a good topic to talk about. <laughs> wow. I feel as if this could become like a part two series of us <laughs> diving deep into like Disney movies. Yeah. <laughs> about expectations around um, body image. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for jumping on, Brit. Like today's conversation has me. been so insightful and I know our listeners are going to be taking a lot taking uh, away a lot from what we've um, spoke about. But before we finish off, where can um, everyone find you? How can they work with you? Uh, so mostly I'm on Instagram. So it's just at actively you underscore. Um, and I have a sage green logo. So it's nice and easy to spot. Um, so that's where I am mostly. So you can find me over there. Um, I do have Facebook and stuff as well. But Instagram's my main kind of place that I hang out so feel free to you know send me a dm or um you know get in touch because yeah you can either um work with me or yeah I can help out different coaches in their um kind of journey I do that a lot with my trainers that um that work for me like we work together a lot on um helping them to become better trainers as well and and everything so yeah you can find me over there I love it. Well, there you go, guys. Um, If you love today's podcast, please make sure that you recommend it, share it, screenshot it, and tag um, the Women's Fitness Academy, tag myself, tag Brie at at actively underscore you. Uh, Actively you underscore. Okay. Actively you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, There you go. Awesome, girls. Well, I hope you took a lot of notes from today. I'm sure I'll be sure taking notes after this. (laughs) Um, yeah, you know what? Keep an open mind to your own body image journey and your clients as well. Mm. Thank you.